Hello, this short webinar is titled The Cycle of Freedom, an Introduction and a Framework for Analysis. And this expands the information that we provided in the quick update if you've watched that already. It's a more detailed introduction to this concept. And at the end, I'll give you an opportunity to consider some additional resources that you might find beneficial for your individual or group use, including this Cycle of Freedom card displayed here to the left. So let's go ahead and get started. Most people tend to view the world around them in terms of their lifespan. This is a short-sighted view and keeps people from seeing the bigger picture. In other words, if you're looking at a piece of large art up close, you cannot see the whole picture. You would look at this image to the left and say, gosh, is this fire? Is it corn? Is it sand? But if you see that part of the artwork in the broader context, you can see the big picture and you can see the art for what it is. Well, the same thing is true of history. Real wisdom is gained by taking a big picture view of not just our lifespan of the last five years or 20 years or 30 years, but a broader view that it expands beyond our life experience, a view that covers 100 years, 500 years, and 1,000 year periods. You can gain real wisdom because what you'll find is that there's nothing new under the sun and that patterns repeat themselves. Winston Churchill, a student of history, said this, the farther backward you can look, the farther forward you're likely to see. Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, commonly known as Goethe, who is a German writer, historian, and politician, said this, he who cannot draw upon 3,000 years is living hand to mouth. This is a great quote because what he is saying is, if you can't draw upon the wisdom of the ages and the broad swaths of historical past, uh, you're going to be living hand to mouth. You will not understand the times and what's going on, and you'll not have true wisdom uh, for living. And so what a proponent for understanding the big picture and the big picture story of history. So let's take him at his word and go back 2,000 years and see what we can learn from some people of antiquity. I give you Polybius of 200 to 118 B.C., 2,000 plus years ago. He's a Greek historian. He lived in the Roman Empire, and he gave a detailed history of the rise and fall of the Roman Empire. He wrote on the separation of powers, and his thinking influenced the founding fathers of America. Os Guinness, a current historian who studies Polybius, quotes him as saying this, In fact, there's an ordained decay and change, or a natural cycle of constitutional revolutions, as nations rise, prosper, and fall. Anyone who understands this cycle of growth, zenith, and decadence is able to follow what is the regular cycle of constitutional revolutions, thus the cycle of freedom that we're studying. Os Guinness goes on to say, This cycle of change is so clear and observable that if anyone takes the trouble to understand it and its causes, they would be able to apply the insight to the history of any nation and to assess accurately where the nation is in its cycle of growth or decline at any moment. So to continue on with Polybius, he perhaps may make a mistake as to the dates at which this or that will happen to a particular constitution, but he will rarely be entirely mistaken as to the stage of growth or decay at which it has arrived or as to the point at which it will undergo some revolutionary change. And so that's why we've put together this Cycle of Freedom framework, a total look at a broad sweep of history. It visually depicts a pattern that's seen over and over again in the lives of nations and people groups. Here's that cycle. Nations or people groups tend to go from bondage to spiritual faith, from spiritual faith to courage, from courage to strength, from strength to liberty, from liberty to abundance, from abundance to leisure, from leisure to selfishness, from selfishness to complacency, from complacency to apathy, from apathy to dependency, from dependency to weakness, and back to bondage again. Whenever this cycle is shown to someone, they usually are able to pick a place on the cycle in just seconds, and that's why it's so useful. Now let me pose four questions for your consideration, and you can pause these videos if you'd like more time. Firstly, where do you think your country is on this cycle? Secondly, where would you like your country to be? Thirdly, how do you think you get to that point? 
And then fourthly, a personal question, where's your life on this cycle? Because people, groups, and nations are made up of individuals. Now let me tell you where we're going with this series. We're going to make an assessment of the U.S. today. We're going to see how ancient wisdom verifies the cycle and who first expressed this cycle. We're going to take a look at the dynamic ingredient, the American experiment, 400 years of American history, and then additional insights from a business leader as well as an international perspective and how decline comes. And we'll also give thoughts on how a civilization stays free. Here are some resources that you might benefit from as you go through this series. We have the Cycle of Freedom cards that uh, you can purchase at the uscivicstraining.org uh, site. I would commend to you a great supplemental book by Oz Guinness, A Free People's Suicide. And this series is not based on this book, uh, but we'll lean on uh, some of Oz Guinness's insights as a supplement to this series. Also, you can sign up for the U.S. Civics Equipping Service if you've not done so already by signing up directly through an email uh, with this link provided or at the uscivicstraining.org site. Uh, using the equipping button and you'll receive links monthly to relevant videos that are relevant to the history of that month. So this is the Cycle of Freedom series. My name is Craig Seibert. Thanks for listening.